so now could i start so please switch up your mobiles and stop discussion no? uh, so if you have any uh, questions any idea to share with me and with your fellow scholars please come forward anything any doubt any question any anything so that i can also discuss yes please use this one use this one press the green button na no? press the green button yeah yeah <laughs> Please sit. Then it will better. Okay. Oh, otherwise you can use this one. No. Let it be more, uh, some uh, discussion. No? Otherwise I shall. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, please carry on. When do we use teleportation? When teleportation? Okay. Uh, he uh, he 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 is asking about. Uh, techniques of avoiding plagiarism. Hmm? Uh, he is asking when we should use quotation or what is paraphrasing and when paraphrasing is required. Okay, I, I shall uh, discuss it uh, later. I am coming to the, these points, and so I shall try to uh, elaborately discuss uh, these points. Okay. Anything else? Not even with this presentation or with this class. Anything related to your topic, we can also discuss. You need not bother to uh, disclose your quote and quote topic, quote and quote, but still we can uh, discuss. Uh, yes. Sir, uh, regarding question of our CV, what is yes as a researcher or as a aspiring CV? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, hmm. uh, what are the expectations from the interview board regarding uh, various levels? If we are diversifying our papers in, uh, if I am publishing five papers, and those five papers are from different journals. But if I am publishing three from a single journal and two from another, another journal, will have different impact or value? Is there any kind of said or unsaid rule regarding that? No, there is no such kind of said or unsaid rule regarding this. Can you follow what he here asked? Okay, there is no hard and fast rule. Look, uh, research nowadays, there is a tendency for interdisciplinary approach. I'm repeating, there is a tendency of interdisciplinary approach. Just to, uh, let me give you an example. Women's study is now an emerging discipline. Okay. And is there any master's in women's study in any university? Rightly, no. Okay. Then why, from which discipline, the faculty is for the women's studies being appointed? Now new departments are coming up. Women's studies, but gender studies, whatever you may call it. But it is not right now, in this moment, available PhD, NAID, in women studies. So they appoint people across the discipline, interdisciplinary approach. For example, if somebody works in Bengali, somebody is doing his PhD in Bengali literature, and he his topic is, I, I use the word in Bengali, I, I, I'm telling the title in Bengali, Motto Juker Kabbe Lingo Boishundo. Gender discrimination in Modhya Jugger Kapu. Medieval, medieval literature. In medieval literature, gender discrimination. Look, that means Ahola and all other Sita, and then how they were dominated by, by male society, and some, all other things in Modhya. And there are different kinds of Modhya Jugger Kapu, Monsha Mongol, Chandi Mongol, and Dharma Mongol, and many other things. So if somebody does research on this area, he is eligible for his Bengali, I mean, for Bengali department. At the same time, he or she can apply, or he has a scope for gender discrimination, gender studies. So his area of specialization becomes wider. His prospect for engagement, prospect for his publication destination becomes more larger. His canvas becomes larger, larger. In that case, for example, for this thesis, his article may be published in Bengali. I mean, uh, what are the Bengali uh, journals? Hello, is there any Bengali scholar? Yes, what is it? What is it? Please, sir. Please help me. Uh, 
ओके 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 आई कैन से मोर नेम्स सो हिज स्कोप इज बीइंग इनलेस इफ योर थीसिस और योर रिसर्च इज सच देन डेस्टिनेशन मे बी वेरियस दैट इज वन पॉइंट सेकेंड पॉइंट योर टाइप ऑफ आर्टिकल एरिया ऑफ स्पेशलाइजेशन अगेन इट वेरीज फ्रॉम फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन आवर फील्ड इन लाइब्रेरी एंड इन्फॉर्मेशन साइंस लॉर्ड्स ऑफ जर्नल्स आर दिया लॉर्ड्स ऑफ जर्नल्स आर दिया वन जर्नल इज डिवोटेड टू डेसी डॉक माई डिफरेंट रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज कॉल्ड डेसी डॉक देर इज अ जर्नल फ्रॉम डेसी डॉक देर देर फर्स्ट एरिया इज बिब्लोमेट्रिक स्टडी बिब्लोमेट्रिक स्टडी बिब्लोमेट्रिक इज एप्लीकेशन ऑफ स्टैटिस्टिक्स ऑन लिटरेरी वारंट आई एम रिपीटिंग स्टैटिस्टिकल एप्लीकेशन ऑन लिटरेचर that is called bibliometric studies i have done few works on uh, bibliometric studies let just give you uh, let me give you an example of bibliometric studies for example uh, the bengali people can understand very much for example gitanjali gitanjali they got got nobel for gitanjali okay so a statistician a library science professional i have an uh, article in uh, on gitanjali gitanjali song offerings a bibliometric study you can search it on google scholar you can search it on research get anyway There, there are statistical interpretation and analysis were, were done in this study. For example, how many words have been used in Gita? Three thousand forty-nine words used. What is the rank one? Rank one is Tumaki. Rank two, which Ami. The, this Tumaki, you means Almighty God. Ami means Tagore himself. So rank one word three hundred three is Tumaki. Rank two two ninety nine is Ami. that means tagore is offering his song to the almighty god in this way can you imagine in this way i can justify the title yes in this way i can justify the title just i'm giving just telling you one point so this is a statistical application in literary, literary in in uh, on literary literary warrant i'm not using quote and unquote definitions similarly there are lots of various library suppose academic library public library special library huh? and in academic library modern application on academic li uh, modern ict technology on library science so if i submit a article on library that university library services a special reference to vishwavarthi if i do this paper that will not be accepted in this doc journal because that, that that's also library science journal. and this paper is actually very much related with library and library science but that they will not accept this paper because their area of specialization i should say micro area of specialization is different from from this paper on vishwavarthi library especially so it is natural that you can write your definition of articles may have may have and impact factor is a really a factor particularly it's in science there is a journal in bengali it is called desh this has no issn yes do you know this has no issn what is issn international standard serial number okay so this has no issn so if you publish an article on bengali ha uh, sahaj paat it may be published in uh, this so and many journals many journals for name sake international journal on religion it is published from calcutta the title is international journal of religion nowadays fraud is like that they used to give a use an address in states and at the same time their chief editor is operating it from calcutta so they may charge dollar for your publication but it's it calcutta publication so these kinds of uh, frauds are there and and there there i can say lots of on it so uh, it doesn't matter so you have to just uh, select your destination and that's why i have suggested this study that you have have to read few few more uh, articles on that journal to assess yourself and the standard of the journal 
as well as quality of your paper and area of specialization. Not area of specialization, micro area of specialization. That is more important. So your article may be published in a variety of journals. For example, for example, a social science. Library science is a social science. If I publish an article on education, where will it be published? If I, if I, I published an article on Sahaj Park, really, uh, very recently I have published an article on Sahaj Park. Do you know Tagore took 40 years to uh, uh, publish this article, this Sahaj Park? Chart Dasho, four decades. So, and, and in post copy uh, period, Sahaj Park is not Sahaj nowadays. So I'm a library science uh, professional, but my destination is literature. I'm a library science professional. Tagore was the first person who started uh, distance education. In 1984, uh, in, in the National Open University started distance education mode after death of demise of uh, our uh, Prime Minister, Mrs. Gandhi. But Tagore started it long, long ago. At one, one point of time in, in India, there were 182 centers of distance education. 182, and Kabbo Moto other degree was even better. If I do, and, and if I show that growth and fall and all other things as a library personnel, what will be the destination of my publication? Obviously, Journal of Education. So, I'm talking about social science. In science, the scenario is different. So, your destination may, doesn't matter. Matter is how, what is the journal uh, credentiality? And what is the strength and weakness? What is the foundation? What is the methodology of it? Any other question? Yeah, look, I can say, uh, just read these slides and uh, discussion will be more fruitful, I think. Otherwise, and I can share my, my uh, conception on this point. And if you don't have anything, then I can switch to my. Okay. Now, uh, before uh, going through the slides and other things, I shall. I would like to point a few words. One is copyright or intellectual property right. Have you any idea? Have you any idea about copyright or intellectual property right? That is important in, in publication, publishing or publication or relating to publishing ethics. Have you any idea? No. Have you any idea about uh, Tagore's copyright? Copyright of Tagore's creation? Copyright of Tagore's publication? No. Okay. Actually, copyright is the right the author enjoys for his creation. For his book, I'm not using the word book. For his creation. Creation may be music. Creation may be literary things. Creation may be drama. Creation may be recitation, huh? that is intellectual property. So creator, author, even he may be collaborator, he may be translator, he may be editor, enjoys the right for his creation. It's termed as copyright. If you see the bharsho of a book, a book is a book, but technically reading is a technically reading a book is quite different. There are different segments, there are different parts of a book. For example, this part of a book is termed as spine. This is spine. So book has spine, but many of us doesn't have. So book has a spine. Similarly, there is title page, half title page, and each page, two, two sides, that is two, two sides of a page. This is called recto and this is the bharsho. So, from the bharsho of a page, you can see, just uh, after going to your home, you observe that there is a copyright statement. In Bengali, it is gontho shakto. Uh, and generally, it is C and sattva. C and sattva. That is called copyright. There is a copyright act. It is a, this act is enacted by the Geneva Convention. That's an international convention. So, according to that, a old copyright act, the authors during his lifetime, the authors during his lifetime enjoys the copyright. After his demise, after his death, he is a legal hereditary. 
আইনত বৈধ উত্তরাধিকারী হিজ লিগেল হেয়ার এনজয় দি রাইট আফটার আপ টু ফিফটি ইয়ার্স অফ অথার্স ডেথ টেগোর লেভ দিস ওয়ার্ল্ড ইন দ্য ইয়ার ইয়ার নাইনটিন টেগোর লেভ দিস ওয়ার্ল্ড ইন দ্য ইয়ার নাইনটিন ফর্টি ওয়ান নাইনটিন ফর্টি ওয়ান সো আফটার এড ফিফটি ইয়ার্স আফটার নাইনটিন ফর্টি ওয়ান দেন মিনস So, nine, after 1991, and Tagore gave his copyright to Vishwar. Tagore gave his copyright to Vishwar. Because in 1993 publication, published by Gautam Guru, established in 1923, he gave all his right to Vishwar. So, Vishwar then enjoys copyright as a monopoly. Copyright of not, not of his books, but also of his uh, songs and all others. And there are lots of controversies, even Mukhi Raghunath and all that, and those were discarded by uh, Vishwar, the music world. If somebody is from Sangeet Bhavan can say more on this. Uh, discarded by music board and many, anything. But so some uh, this thing is also part of it. Okay. So after 1991, copyright, Tagore has, this shouldn't have any copyright on Tagore's things. Tagore's intellectual property. But at that time, Indian parliament, led by three Bengalis, Pono Mukherjee, Shumna Chakherji, and Pyoran Yandas Munchi, there is a slogan, Saho Jarabindana, Samukh Jarabindana, Tema Vishu Jarabindana. Accurate publication of Jarabindana, Tagore as affordable price and available to Jarabindana publication. So with this slogan, Parliament of India changed, amended that. So Vishwavarthi enjoys copyright of Tagore's work up to 2001. Only after 2001, Tegos creation are being published by Tom D. Carey, XYZ. And there is a unique study before and after publication of Tegos copyright by Vishwavarthi publication and others. So, and there's a long history. I should not, already I have told him at length. So that is the right of, of the author enjoys for his creation. And actually, this right are bipartite agreement between the author and the publisher. Bipartite agreement between the author and publisher. When you will publish book, be careful about this agreement. When you will submit an article for publication, be careful about your uh, uh, terms of condition or declaration. It's a bipartite agreement that 500 copies will be printed in this year. 500 will be part, uh, books uh, price. You will get 10% royalty. Authors and gets royalty for his creation. You'll get 10% royalty at the end of financial year or calendar year. Accounts will be submitted or given to you. For example, a book has 500 copies of a book published. Price is 500, 100 copies sold. So 500 into 100, that is 50,000. And each 10% that is 5,000 offer will get. That is the copy. When you submit an article for publication to a journal, Many a time, Jarna, you have to, you have to give, give declaration. And declaration part is very much important to reduce conflict of interest. Conflict of interest is a connotation used in journal publication. I have two, three, four slides on this. So this may reduce conflict of interest and declaration. What are the points of declaration? The author will insist, the publisher will insist you to submit declaration before publication that the copyright will be entrusted to the publisher. You have every right to decide, to take decision whether you will forego your copyright to a publisher. What the publisher will do with this copyright? Collecting seven, eight, the 10 articles of similar nature, they may compile a book under one editorship and they will need money. So whether you will surrender your copyright or not, you have to take decision. Declaration also includes you have no conflict of interest. That means with this publication, you have no personal interest or any professional interest. There is no personal interest or professional interest. This kind of declaration is also necessary. And one important declaration is you have not submitted the article elsewhere for publication. I told you yesterday. You have not submitted the article elsewhere for 
publication. That is also very much important in, in the class. This is one, I gave two concepts. One is declaration, another is copyright. And this declaration reduces the conflict of interest as will come later on. Please note, you have every right to withdraw your article from publisher. You have submitted an article for publication. The, uh, the author is uh, delaying or he's just with a bad review remarks, with a bad review remarks, which you doesn't agree. You have every right to disagree with the reviewer. And in that case, you have every right to withdraw the article. I have such kind of personal experience. You have every right. Suppose in an article, you use lots of quotation. If you write an article, Tagore's Educational Philosophy, an overview, if this is article, you must have quote lots, you use lots of quotation from uh, Tagore Shikha, be it uh, um, um, uh, Shikha Swarbhagin Goron, be it Shikha Herpen, or be it Tabogone Shikha, or be it Tagore's personality. You have to use lots of quotation. So, when it will come through a, uh, I mean, a plagiarism check, so most of the area will be blue because you have used lots of quotation. The author may, say, the editor may say, because he is not a Tagore expert, he may say that you have copied, copied not it will not come under plagiarism, but you have copied lots of portion from this uh, from uh, Tagore's own writing, so reduce it or something else. So I'm giving an example. In that case, you have every right to say, sorry, I will not delete the quotation. Otherwise, let me allow to withdraw the paper because if I withdraw or delete some of the quotation, the gravity or central focus of the paper will be reduced. I give you just an example. So you have every right to withdraw the paper. Obviously, it's, it will depend upon your scholarship your knowledge on that particular area and your credential. But please remember you have right. You are not all the time, you are not begging. A good article, the publisher also intend to get good articles. Onustub in Bengali, there is a journal. Huh? Hello. Onustub is a Bengali journal. Huh? In Onustub, they make some special issues. For example, with the Shagor or Ramon on the centenarias or something like come, comes. So they knock scholars. Because that will enrich their publication. So it is not that you are begging all the times. Good article, the publishing house, the publisher, the editor also requires good article. And finally, during the declaration part or disclosure part, many a times science projects are funded by different agencies. Scientific research funded by different agencies. But in foreign countries, all the research are funded by generally by agencies. In that case, in that case, the funding agency's name, if it is mandatory within the agreement, it is mandatory during the release of funds to your uh, department to, dis to disclose that this project, this paper is funded by the funded by ICAR, for example. And this is done under their guidance, complying their guidance. So this kind of disclosure is also necessary during submission of articles for publish. And in research, whatever I am talking, whatever others will talk, please. Note this line, your guide is supreme. That is important. And success of research ultimately depends upon tal mil between you and supervisor. Somebody may observe these words are harsh and I'm talking something else, but I have lots of experience, at least though I'm a uh, professional, but I used to teach in different universities. So I have lots of experience in this area. Uh, so after one of my friends is a really, really, really good scholar. 
He can teach even the teachers. I'm repeating, he can teach even the teachers, but he didn't get PhD after 10 years. So this is important. So at the end of these uh, sessions, not my sessions only, all other sessions, forget it. What guide will say is, that is, that, that is ultimate, 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 you have to get, uh, go through these things. Huh? That, that is my experience, what I have said. So now, uh, if you have any questions, then otherwise I shall move to my head. Note on things. Be free. Because when you select a topic, select a topic which you can enjoy. Anunde shonge korte paden. You can do it with pleasure. And, in, and please consult with your supervisor, consult with your guidance, uh, guide, frankly, that this is our area I, I prefer. Then the output will be much, much better. Any question? I mean, anything uh, about publication? Because I am involved in the reviewing process with many journals. So I have some kind of experience. That's why I'm uh, sharing my practical knowledge. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are you Bengali? No. In Bengali, there is a good term for open access and closed access. I'm using the term Bengali because Bengali people can enjoy us. Mukto Moncho, Bodho Moncho. Mukto Moncho, Bodho Moncho. Mukto Moncho means open access. Vishwabharati uh, library is open access because you have access to the library directly. You can enter the library directly and you can select your required documents. Because in the library, the documents are located side by side. It is called co-location of subjects. For example, somebody is uh, doing research on child, child economics. In our su subject 331 is child labor. Uh, ch child labor engaged in agriculture. For example, in India, somebody is doing research uh, on this topic or child uh, guard labor engaged in not only child guard labor engaged in uh, agriculture this is the top so when you enter the stack all the books on child labor are located in 331 that is a technique that's a system that is a discipline like science is a discipline don't uh, ignore this one huh? so all the books on child labor are working side by side all the subjects are co-located all the books are, but there is different authors. I wrote a, uh, wrote a book, you wrote a book, he wrote a book. So books, 331, then surname of the author. And surname of the author arranged chronology, chronologically from A to Z. So suppose you decided that I will select, a, I will study a book on me, written by me, written by Partha. But when you enter in the stack and so, Observe, oh my God, there is a book on this topic written none by Ashurudra. Ashurudra was a uh, famous uh, economist. Eh? Though he was Marxist, Marxist economist, that's why he doesn't get Nobel, otherwise he's a Nobel man. Ashurudra, then will immediately discard my book. You know what my book? will immediately pick up Ashurudra's book and happily go home. Because you have that choice. You have the choice, you have the access liberty to select your book. Because books on the same subject are co-located side by side. But in close access, I'm giving you a practical example so that you uh, will uh, remember the difference. But in close access, you have no right to enter the stack. You will just search OPAC, give the call number, and the library personnel will enter the stack and we'll come back, Elam. Sorry, I didn't get it. 
many a times, sorry to say, they will not go to the, up to the stack. They will enter in the bathroom, come back, and say sorry payment. That is closed access. Obviously, closed access have, have certain advantage and open access have a uh, certain advantage and disadvantage. So I will not go through that. Similarly, when a journal is articles are open for public consumption, open for, for public domain, that is open access. And when you have to pay something, you have, you have some obstacles for getting it. You have to register, you have to pay. You mean you are your institution. Many times our library uh, pays for you, UGC pays for you. So that is also a, pay, a payment mode that is called closed access. Nowadays, I told you study, the government and research domain are at good, uh, advocating for open source, open source movement, because you are, your research is funded by, in one way or other, by government. Government means general taxpayer money. So your outcome, output of the research is not only for you, but it's for the society. That is open source. Any other question? Sir, yes. Time, yeah. Okay, I agree with you. Because many a times when you submit your article for publication, you gave your copyright to that publication, to that uh, publisher. Obviously, they will make business from it and they will make money from it. In, in uh, yesterday, I told that paid journals, these are called paid journals. Paid journals are not bad in all the times because in science, many renounced journals published by Elsevier or something like that kind of reputed uh, journals, they charge fees because they know that project is funded by some agencies. The research is funded by some agencies and the fees for publication will not be given by the scholar. It will be given by the institution or the funding agencies. That's why many a time they used to charge us. There is no, please look. What I am I am talking about for my presentation is general type agencies. It is not a problem specific or not to any particular, not related to any particular subject related. So research hypothesis, research thing, chapterization. Uh, yesterday I asked uh, somebody, he gave me example of five chapters. Somebody is sitting there. She is right. He is right because that is general thing. But if I do research on that gender discrimination in Madhya Juger Kabbo, chapter will be 10. Because Mongol Kapu itself may take one chapter. <laughs> each Kapu may take a, 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 one chapter each. Then chapterization may be 10. So it's a general presentation. And if you have any, any specific topic related um, question or uh, something else, that we can also discuss within my limited knowledge. Any other question? Yes, please. Please, please, uh, uh, press green button. Okay, please uh, say it so loudly, no? so that others can hear. Yes. Yeah. Period journal can also be control, yes, yes. That's the academic culture that depends upon the academic culture of, of a country. Academic honesty, not only of you, 
ethical part of you, your department, but also the state has a responsibility. Can we say that we are living in such an ideal situation? Let me give you an example. Just, just last month, one of my colleagues, I, I actually work in Sriniketa, no? Agriculture, no? Institute of Agriculture, Library at SKR. There, one professor, I'm not uh, using his name, he's an editor of a journal. They published 57 articles in a single issue. Just, uh, just last issues. Generally, generally, if you consult the, uh, the journals, on an average, 8 to 10 articles. Now, I'm not talking about an institute or bank of Bengali. Generally, 8 to 10 articles is enough. Even 5 to 8 articles is enough. They're planning to publish 57 articles because they are taking 3,000 for per article. So 57 into 3,000, okay. And when you have uh, uh, an article and it belongs to a department or you'll insist for its uh, circulation. Naturally, it's all we are human beings. And the uh, fellow professor resigns from the eight world board because review is not there. Even as a reviewer, when he objected part a particular paper, that has also been included. And he's the uh, uh, one among the board of editors. So there is a, uh, a very good Bengali proha, Shoshen Modde That is very difficult. And there, there, there lies the credentiality of a, not of an individual, but also an institution. But from your uh, conducted your research, I'm from IIT Bombay. I'm from IIT Kanpur. That is something different. Level is high. We have completed your uh, research from both institutes. But, so that is there. As soon as somebody will uh, know where you are completing your research in Bengali, Lodi Janan Mithila University, Bhagalpur. Where you are completing uh, your uh, PhD in Bengali? From Jadavpur or from... So, it depends. And slowly, I'm sorry to say, I'm sorry to say, slowly, these, these research degrees are becoming degrees. Please remember, just two, three years ago, MPhil was a, treated as a research degree. Advertising used to come PhD oblique MPhil. Nowadays, if anybody insists you to take admission in MPhil, will you take? Why? MPhil has lost its credibility as a research degree. It has become just like a dissertation, like your master's dissertation. So, uh, that depends upon, and in our country, you know, everything is really centered about POLIT, ICS. It's true, I'm uh, talking about uh, ground level reality. So, are you enjoying this kind of thing or should? <laughs> Any others? Yes, please. The data is? Because the data is already given by the journal. He's, 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 he's asking that he has submitted for an article for publication to a journal. But after some uh, time, he realized that this should not be the destination of his article. Uh, and he's, you are planning to withdraw the paper. Uh, okay, you can, before submitting it to another journal, you have to withdraw it. Okay, you are withdrawing it. And now you, his question is whether the data will be manipulated, whether the data will be used by somebody else. In Indian context, it, again, it depends upon the journal's credibility. It, it depends upon the journal's height. It depends upon the journal's impact factors. It depends upon the journal's authenticity. That is important. So if you submit to a journal 
who has just started publication two, three years back to earn money or to get a, a uh, isolation number or recognition from the UGC. UGC list, uh, they are, they are, no, UGC list published there. Uh, subject was released to us people they are in, in UGC websites. Then that may differ. Otherwise, if you cons uh, uh, think about ethical part, the, not the editor, if it is sent to the reviewer, not even the reviewer should disclose your name, should not, not use your statistical part or any your intellectual ideas to anybody else. But many a times they speak, no. I can give an example also where the editor take part of it. Again, in an article, in a statistical paper, one of my uh, fellow professors submitted and published an article three years back. The same data, the same data, using the same data, same table, one published an article, just changing the titles and some other concepts and something like that, and published the same journal. So the author, I mean, the first author, I mean, it's his creation, it's idea, his intellectual property, wrote to the publisher that this data, this published in such such volume and number, now using this one. So please withdraw the paper or notify it properly in your channel. The chief editor bring out the old publication, compared it, and in the next issue, they gave a bold declaration. The paper, we are withdrawing the paper published in this issue as most of the material, including the statistical part, have been published long ago by Professor Patacharjo on volume number, volume such, number such. Such kind of things is also, such kind of honesty is also there. Because they, it, once it is published, they can do, they can withdraw it. They can say sorry for it. So such kind of honesty is also there. So now, should I come to the response? No? Actually, I've covered all these things in a storytelling mode. So I, yesterday, I told that uh, in a publishing, uh, there are four stakeholders, no? the author, the author C, the editor, the reviewer. Ah, okay. So everybody, ethical part, what you were talking about, no? the predictory journal and paid, paid articles, everybody has responsibility. And ultimately, it's a social thing. So society has the responsibility. Government has the responsibility. Otherwise, morality, none can thought. Morality can be injected. It's inborn thing from the family, from the locality, and from the society ultimately. So editors, uh, publishers has the ethical part, ethics part. Those are... What you are asking about now, the records, the first point is that guardian, she was scholarly records. A true guardian can never disclose the weakness part, the confidential part of his family. So a publisher should never disclose, even you withdraw their things, not only disclose, share with others the part. Then safeguard editorial independence. That is also important. I am, as an editor, there is an editor in a journal, there is an editor and there, are, there is chief editor and the associate editor and their editorial board. So chief editor generally ornamental things. Chief editors is generally ornamental. Actually, associate editors sometimes, again, editorial boards is also ornamental. One of them, one or two of them may be active. So if chief edit, edit, editor insists, editorial board or insist if you are to publish or to take care of a specific article or influence, that should be. That is unethical. So safeguard editorial independence. That must be there. 
similarly the journal should practice best practices of the industry latest up to date practice of the industry for example yesterday you started we were talking about the submission process no somebody told that we submitted it uh, and mail it look just few years back when we were scholars we used to submit article to the publisher through cd we have to give a hard copy and cd Uh, at that time, CD were uh, sold in books, bookshops, and I mean in other places. So we used to send CD. Nowadays, if a publishing house asks you to submit hard copy your of your uh, paper and submit it through CD, is it not backdated? It is not up to that up to the industry. Now you have to submit online. If they will generate your password, you can collaborate. You can get communication. You can look your up to dateness of the paper when the in first review, second review, or what is the position. That is the latest. So journal house also have to cope with this best practice of the universities. That is the third point. And all these points I have already more or less uh, discussed. The slide will be shared to you. I just. Uh, Uh, a, a, educate researcher on publishing ethics, timely publication, reduce conflict of interest, predictive publication, such such. And regarding conflict of interest, I shall uh, discuss details in my next slides. <laughs> Then reviewer also have some ethics. If one article is sent to me for review, and if I use some portion of it for my own consumption. Or if I share it with my scholar, that is criminal offence in the academic area, and one should declare this as academic fraud. Nobody should uh, do this kind of thing because you are uh, you are playing with lives of scholars. You are playing with lives of uh, academic uh, things. That should never, never be compromised. That means constantly vigilance over the published records. That is also there. Vigilance over publishing records. That means same type of article, same type of data has already been published elsewhere. I give you just examples, just few minutes ago. The old records submitted in a new form. So this kind of vigilance, a true scholar, a true scholar with knowledge, may also take reviewer can also. Take or should take track of publication on his area because he is a resource person. Similarly, editor, the another stakeholder, editor has also responsibility. What are those reviewers? He has to obey reviewers' decision. He shouldn't influence reviewers' decision. But obeying reviewers' decision. For a editor, or for a scholar, or making defence of opinion from it, may vary. May vary. That doesn't matter. You have every right to put your point, make defence of your opinion. I can give examples uh, on this. Uh, do you know the Lal Gaur in West Bengal? In jungle mall area, many people lived there below poverty line. The so tribal people they live below poverty line, okay. And there are some sectors called service sector. There are some sectors called service sector. For example, electricity, water, health, education, transport. Huh? These are called service sector. So, and obviously, as I'm life profession, I include educational institution. I include. Library. So seven sectors are there. So if if total population, if you divide the total population by service sector, you will get a ratio. Ratio of service sector and population, and there are some other techniques of this and methodology whereby you can find that this this sector is strong, this sector is lower, and this sector is lowest, and you can compare with this sector with a developed block. For example, from Lalgaon to Sri Nikhil Tambur, and thereby you can justify 
that that's why they are deprived more focus should be given to the, these service sector industries service sectors and the sole emphasis should be given to education or roads whatever maybe what according to your findings findings so i submitted this paper for publication in the icr journal sorry csi journal so the author chief editor mahes g mahes uh, refused to take he told that it is a wonderful paper this methodology is fine but it doesn't suit with my thing look it is a csr publication santipa industries government of india publication i are good are good and are good and are good because it is information we are generating information we are dealing with information modern age is the age of information you know modern age is the age of information all we are dealing with information so it generates information it generates new knowledge and that is proved by this military uh, census data of 2001 2011 even and 2021 So please uh, uh, say that library science is not a social science, and library science doesn't deal with information. Okay, no problem. I can withdraw the paper, but please think it twice. Ultimately, after two three communications, he agreed. Okay, sir, this is one of the uh, path breaking paper, and we'll publish it. And yes. So my point is not. I'm. I'm not telling you that I. I my point is you have every liberty to argue so owing decision is not contribution to editor review decision is not all the times that you have to obey or comply what is said you have argument you have strong basis you have strong methodology then you can go through then alternate uh, ethical issues standards of objectives and competing interest competing interest i shall come later on so you have an idea about plagiarism should i say something on it oh you have some questions on this no okay what is it have you any idea oh, no no okay that is your question should you use direct quotation what or what is paraphrasing that is your question but what is plagiarism have you any idea what is it uh, just uh, just uh, read the uh, second point simply act of presenting others work or ideas as your own what is it copying other thing without recognition to him copying other things without proper citation onne jini nijer bole chali dawa just copying other things that things may be his quotation may be his ideas may be his uh, uh, any kind of intellectual property that is one kind of one kind of theft sorry to say that is called plagiarism and it can at any time it can be caught nowadays if it is available in this idiot box in the cloud that can be traced up so that is uh, plagiarism and and what is <laughs> what it again let me share with me ha huh? ha huh? kidna yeah actually so this is hiding in him i am strong in some uh, maybe this is a hard word huh? so that you do no <laughs> no actually that is the case many a times based on our culture we just don't mind it but it is very very serious in some countries and it is taught even in school days the ethical part plagiarism part is taught in school uh, syllabus in school age school days but we even buru khonka ha huh? Used to <laughs> used to ignore these things, but we can't. Oh, when it occurs, when you are copying, summarizing, inappropriate, paraphrasing, or citing common knowledge, facts, ideas without giving credit to a person who has created it. Main theme is you have to give credit to the creator. You have to give credit to the First person who conducted research, first person who code uses code. Then why it is important? 
theft of intellectual property. I told earlier. Then it's cheating, resulting in receiving pay for zero for the assignment. If it is caught, life gone, gone. Many times you saw that they awarded PhD, including ministers and others. Huh? And after some days or some years, somebody moved to the court that it is my copy, copying my entire things. And if it is Neta, then fine. Other, if it is like a poor fellow like me, what will happen? And it should be taught at the school level. That's why I'm talking about. So it's again intentional and unintentional. All the times people, not only intentionally they dance, but if you follow certain techniques, you can avoid it. What are those techniques? The details I'm not uh, uh, talking, reading. How to avoid? How to avoid? Opinion, statistics, facts, information from an author or any other author source. Or the author required to put down food notes. Quotation marks, etc. You have to, when you're paraphrasing means, when using some other's work in your thesis, just change without changing it. Without changing it, if you total, if you total take things from others and put in your thesis, that is offense. But if you study a particular paragraph, a particular book, and if you summarize it in your own words, then that is called paraphrasing. If you have proper knowledge of it, then you can avoid it. And this practice should be made. This practice, this is a practice and should be start at the beginning. When you started your research, when you're taking the first note, don't try to copy line by line from the text. Read it, memorize it, put it in your own words. That way you can avoid one thing. And second thing, using quotation means you are recognizing, you are citing the author. Quotation is not enough. After quotation, you have to establish a link. I'm repeating, repeating. After quotation, you have to establish a link, link between the quotation and the references given at the end of that paper or at the end of a chapter or at the end, total end, entire end of a document. Generally, generally, if you use more quotations, references should be given. I'm repeating many, many guides, many scholars, they give all the references at the end. But my humble suggestion is that reference should be given at the end of each chapter. At the end of each chapter, because in chapter one, if you give one reference, if your uh, examiner, examiner of your thesis, we used to check it. He has to move, move the entire document and move to the end at the end to see the reference. But it is, if it is given immediately after that chapter, he can easily after browsing three, three four, five, ten pages can uh, uh, check the references. So sir, using quotation is not enough. You have to establish a link between the quotation and the reference given at the end of each chapter. And there are different techniques of establishing this kind of links. And the techniques depends upon the citation style you follow in your thesis. I'm repeating, the technique depends upon the citation style you follow you in your thesis. For example, if you follow APA style, in my presentation, uh, certain uh, styles techniques are also given at the beginning slides. If you follow APA style, that means like American Psychological Association style, APA, American Psychological Association style, their style is that surname of the author for establishing the link within the text, after quotation, surname of the author, colon, year of publication. Surname of the author, colon, year of publication. And at the end, when reference, you are arranging the references, they will be arranged according uh, from A to Z, alphabetically, keeping surname first. For example, if you use a quotation from my book, then Rai, colon, my, I am Ray, R-A-Y, Ray, colon, 2022. That means it is published in 2000, 
22. And at the end, if you have references, suppose 20 references, it will start from A, Ain Odikari, B, Banerjee Bhakur, C, Chatterjee, D, E, F, then P. And up only mine is R, so only after alphabetical sequence R, then colo, then comma, first name and second name, part so protein, full stop. Then within first bracket, year of publication. Then if it is journal article, there is different kind of citation. If it is book, there is different kind of citation. So establishing this kind of link is very, very much important. So quotation at the same time, establishing link can avoid or you can pass through plagiarism check because you are giving full credential or credit to the original contributor. Is it clear? Yes, okay. So how to avoid citation, cite, quotation, paraphrasing, summarizing. Summarizing, I'm talking, paraphrasing, I've already narrated. So these are the techniques to avoid. And, and these techniques you have to practice. From the beginning, particularly I'm talking about science, uh, social science, literature, uh, uh, like that. Uh, at the beginning of your uh, research work, when you, not, when you are jotting down, you are noting down things. Please don't forget to jot down the references in every slips. And nowadays, if, uh, computer is enough, they will auto automatically arrange the references uh, properly. And, and conversion from one style to another style is possible. I'm repeating, conversion from one style to another style is possible through some just software. I think they will give you uh, hands-on experience of this kind of software. That is possible because basic information are the same. What are the basic information? Author's name, publisher, title, year of publication, place of publication. Just style to style difference is the permutation combination of these informations. These are the good scholarly practices during the time of research to avoid pleasure. Avoid copying during taking notes. Be sure, write down. I, I, I've already narrated, so I should not repeat this thing. So these are the software that, that can use to identify or check your uh, things, which you copied. Huh? We, in Vishwavarati, we used uh, Urkund. Huh? That's, that's why it is bold. So, the, and there is an actually, I am, that these things are according to a syllabus. In the syllabus, there is a concept called COPE. Huh? COPE means copyright guide, they provide copyright guidelines, ethical guidelines. Oh, what's the time? Time. <laughs> <laughs> So the, these are the uh, COPE uh, guidelines. Just you will uh, we'll read these things, uh, not my opinion. Now I'm talking about conflict of interest. That is also part of your uh, syllabus. What is it? This is a primary objective, secondary objective. What is the primary objective? Again, it depends, Paris. One is professional objectives is there, departmental objectives is there, scholars, individual or personal target or objective is different. What is profession or professional objectives? Have you any idea about profession? What is the difference between vocation and profession? By following which criteria a vocation can be treated as a profession? Hello? I can't follow. Okay, there is a book, Ikigai, huh. where uh, we see the formation of that profession. Formation of a profession. Okay. I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not, in, uh, wish to go through in detail of that, but a profession to be treated as, a vocation to be treated as a profession so, should follow certain criteria. One is professional degree or qualification. I'm just mentioning two, three. Another is professional ethics or code of conduct. Another one is professional publication. 
There are many things. Doctor is a profession. Lawyer is a profession. Why? Because they are professional ethics. A sister is a professional person. Because when, when he's uh, taking his certificate in the name of Sister Nivedita, he has to take oath that I shall such and such. So every profession and professional qualification is there. So professional interest is one thing. Scholar's interest is different. Scholar, what is the scholar's basic interest? To develop knowledge, to general knowledge, to generalize his thesis, to generalize his ideas so that it can be applicable to other similar kinds of problem too. So that it can be applied to other kinds of problems too. That is his basic interest. He may be some other hidden interest that you have to get job, you have to change family, you have to be really luxurious life. Those are the secondary parts. The secondary parts, when influenced the primary one, then conflict of interest starts. Academic interest influenced by some other kind of interest, then if, for example, what are the other kinds of interest? Financial interest. Financial interest is there. If financial interest become more prominent, more dominant than your academic interest or even professional interest, then conflict of interest may start. If for publication, uh, for uh, developing medicine, for vaccine, for COVID, if you overlook look the stages, the taste, taste and taste, sample taste, 50, more sample, more sample, then it will come in the market for as a tested vaccine. But commercial interest is, there is a huge demand. You have to just produce and you have to supply and the house will make money. So that is professional task. That is financial. So if the researching, researching of the laboratory is specialized by the external agencies like external interest like finance, then conflict between authenticity of research, credibility of the organization, credibility of the laboratory, and the secondary interest starts. Is it not? So to resolve conflict of interest, what should be the ultimate point of consideration? Ultimate point of consideration should be the honesty, should be the academic consideration, should be the research consideration, should be knowledge for knowledge sake consideration. Repeating the word, should be knowledge for knowledge sake consideration not other things, but when others personal, professional, or external things influence, then conflict of interest starting. Again, it can be differentiated in two ways, primary and secondary. These are things, it may be categorized in different ways, personal, non-personal, uh, professional. Now, how to resolve it? Many a time, it is unavoidable. Many a time, it is unavoidable. In our daily life experience, we used to see that medical representatives visit the doctors. They give samples. That is true. At the same time, they give medical literature to the doc doctors. Studying medical literature includes latest inclusion, latest invention, latest available medicine on a particular area or particular disease, that is important for the doctor. Sample file is also important. He may give it to the poor patients. He may taste it, how it works. That is also important. But if a doctor collect those samples and sell it to the medical shops, 
that is but we have such kind of day to day experience most of all most of us have that is different but so it can be avoided in all the cases but at the same time you have to maintain a level compromising level Now come on, please ask your questions. Please ask your questions. I'm not uh, line by line. I'm not repeating the code of conduct, ethics, and all other things. Uh, but what you observe from my presentation and. If you have any questions relating to your publication, ethics, and anything else, you can share with me. Otherwise, I shall shut down. Yes. Yeah. Which one should be Oh, it depends upon uh, upon the text. If using direct protection justify more strongly your opinion, your statement, your hypothesis, your uh, research question, then use protection. If it is not directly related or essential, then you can. Paraphrasing. So it depends upon the situation. It depends upon the uh, problem. Uh, either you will use quotations or you will use. Yes. Nobody can comment in general. No, paraphrasing is better than using quotations. But from my my opinion, using it is uh, my first uh, answer is. Nobody can suggest. It depends upon their situation, problem, flow of sentences, writing styles. But my suggestion is using quotations is strain them. But before using quotation, you have to create the situation. <laughs> I'm repeating. Before using the quotation. You have to create the situation so that quotation exactly fits with 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 with, with your previous lines or preceding slide. That is important. Many a times we use quotation for quotation sake. I am repeating. Many a time we, we use quotation for quotation sake. That is because a experienced person can and any time identify. So before using quotations, you have to. Create the context, right? Create the context is the right word. And after using the quotation, again you have to. That is important. And and uh, please remember, uh, these things can not be taught through lectures. If you start writing, if you uh, publish few things, then it will automatically develop. That's why still we are in a learning process. That is very much important, and we, and everybody should uh, agree with this statement. That's why we are learning. So it is uh, not in a general sense which uh, which one is better that can be answered in a yes or no. Any other question? Enough. Yeah. বলো নিমা তুমি বলো দাঁড়ান 
<laughs> UGC published a list of art recognized article, recognized journal that is called UGC Care List. UGC Care List. Okay. So for promotion, for consideration in uh, academic intel boards, they used to consider that. Have you ever published all the articles are from the included in the UGC Care List? But as I would say in a uh, official forum, there are many manipulation in it. Many new journals, just one year old. Because in policy of inclusion has some standards. Even you have to, if you wish to get ISSN for a journal, you have to at least publish three issues. You have to submit those three issues for its consideration for ISSN number. And obviously the board uh, who alerts this kind of uh, number should review to the help of experts that yes, it is at percent standards of the subjects. Then it ISS number allocated. Similarly, there is some official mechanism. One of the mechanisms should be impact factor for inclusion in this list. But, but by different unfair, I, I should not use the word unfair, but by, by some different means, they included lots of journal included in UGC Calist. I gave you just an example. This is not uh, uh, with ISS number, but a publication in this, in Bengali uh, Intel board, will they discard it? Many journals, title is International Journal of, it is published from Bhedia, but the title itself is International. If, if, you, if you wish to uh, study on these areas, a good article from my Guru Professor Dikesen is there. Very good article is there. Again, that's published in Anans. But recently, UGC itself rec reconsidered these things. Now publication in UGC care list is not mandatory in the recent circular according to recent circular. And peer-reviewed journal, any peer-reviewed journal having ISS number is admissible. And this list, what you have asked another question, what is the frequency of list? No, no, no. It is one time they have published it. And after one time publication, lots of controversy and other things, that's why you should have had to review it. Okay, then I'm coming to my conclusion part. <laughs> Research misconduct is a growing problem because all the times we are bound to compromise quality versus quantity. If our promotion depends upon such number of publication, you will get 10 marks for this, 15 marks for this. Then I have to run for quantity, but not for quality. So in a negative way, in an indirect way, government or the policy, education policy is changing us for numbers. So as a scholar, you have to start. Some, some people say, oh, I have uh, 70 articles. And very renowned scholar, they used to publish one article, two, maximum two articles in a year. Those who have 70 articles, right, used to write 10 books, 15 articles per year. So that is, yeah. And for, for chasing love for the numbers, they compelled to use cut and paste technique and many more. Focus is largely on plagiarism, data falsification, data fabric replication. I have already narrated. Duplicated, duplicating publication can be treated as helpless. I told you earlier that you submit it to one journal, in another journal, you submit the same thing. You have just changed the title or just some facets of your paper, that is, that is also. Uh, 
and responsibility is all for proper publication, for scholarly publication, for proper maintenance of ethical standards, the responsibility is all means all the stakeholders. The editor, the author, primary responsibility, the publisher, the editor, at the same time, the reviewers, they have all the participation. So my request is keep your face always towards the sunshine and shadow will fall behind you. So look towards the sunshine, looks towards the honesty, looks towards the genuine, genuine research and its publication. Then all the bad things as shadow will be behind you. All other interests will be behind you as shadow. Your primary interest, research, 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 knowledge for knowledge sake. And your contribution to the universe domain of knowledge, universe of knowledge is that should be the primary. So, thank you.